Hello everyone, this video will talk you through how you might want to go about answering the nine mark questions that you'll get in your GCSE paper. The important thing to note really is that nine markers, more often or not, happen in the first sort of two mini sections of each paper that you get. So on paper one, you're likely to get a nine marker in the hazards unit and in the ecosystem section. And on paper two, you're likely to get a nine marker in urban issues and changing economic world. And in paper three, you're highly likely to get a nine marker about field work in your issue evaluation. Now, that's not to say that you won't get them anywhere else in your papers. However, those are the most common places you're likely to find them. So a nine mark question can sound and quite feel a bit daunting. OK, um, but really, when you break them down, they're quite nice and simple and they always follow a similar sort of structure in terms of marking. So if we have a little look here at my grid, most of you will be familiar with this as it's something you've seen in lessons. But the paper that you're looking at or the questions rather that you're looking at answering are always marked on three assessment objectives. So those assessment objectives would be AO1, AO2 and AO3. So the more familiar you become with these three terms, the easier I think you'll find the writing. So when we talk about AO1, we're thinking about anything that's specific. So case study detail, for example, would fit really nicely here as part of AO1. Okay, so let's put that up here to remind us. AO2, and we're talking about that. That's our explanation. So that's adding something onto our points. Now in geography, the most common way we would do this is by saying phrases like, this means that. So last but not least then, AO3 must be evaluation. So that's weighing up what's good or what's bad about something. So a good rule of thumb would be to try and hit each one of these within a paragraph. Now remember on a nine marker, you're really writing here two good paragraphs and a tiny conclusion. And we'll talk more about that conclusion in a minute. But if we look at the difference and the way that we can work our way up to the top, this scale here on the left hand side is really going to help us. So if we're able to put some facts and figures in there that we know, develop them a little bit and say, well, they're good and bad. We're going to start working our way up to the top again of this scale. If you have a go at the question, you think, I don't really remember my facts and figures and you explain and evaluate, well, you're probably going to be in here a little bit. If you've got an odd fact or figure that you remember, and of course, it's always got to be linked to the question and you explain it and you evaluate it. Well, that's how you're going to get here. And if you consistently, that means throughout your answer, have got case study detail, you're really making solid points, you're explaining well and you're evaluating, remember evaluation is both sides of the argument, isn't it, positive and negative, then you'll end up here in the detailed section. And that's ultimately where we want to be, isn't it? At the bottom of the screen here, you'll see I've given you some hints about how to sort of tick off A01, 2 and 3. So to tick off A01, we'd make sure we've got our facts and figures. We talk about our examples and we'd use subject specific terminology, okay? That's a really fancy way of saying key words, okay? It doesn't always have to be the biggest word, but we're after the geography words linked to the question. AO2, well, that's where we're explaining everything that we've just said over here in AO1, okay? So backing it up, developing it. We would quite often do that in geography, as we said earlier, with that phrase, this means that. It's like the because of geography. So this means that there really is no end. OK, bonus points always goes for how many times you can use that in your answer. And then AO3, well, that's our evaluation. So if it says we're well, using the figure, check back. Have you used the figure? And last but not least, this perhaps here is the most important point. It's making sure you've got that overall judgment. OK, that normally comes in the form of a conclusion. When I think about a conclusion on a nine marker, I'm not thinking about a massive paragraph. I'm thinking about a small couple of sentences at the end that round off or finish the answer that we've got. Quite often, the way that you'll access nine out of nine is by making sure you've got that overall judgment at the end. 
So by not having a conclusion, you do limit yourself in the end with your answer. So if we recap then before we finish, a little secret guide for a nine marker is to make sure you've got your points, your line of argument, back it up with case study detail, explain it, and then say why it's good or bad. That would be my structure for a nine marker, and I would do that for two paragraphs. As always, if you're unsure about this, or you've got some more questions that follow on from it, please go and ask your geography teacher. But I hope this helps talk you through nine markers.